I've made a uh, half trial in calico of my basic bodice. I've put all the darts in because it's quite a fitted garment. So it's got all the darts and I've put a sleeve on. And the first thing I've realized is because the Dior jacket is really, really fitted. I'm actually gonna make my darts at the waist slightly bigger. So I'm just gonna repin it. So I go back. Still taking out. You don't, you want sort of, in general, for that, if it was coarser the back of a day, so it would have been super tight, but generally you want 2.5 centimeters breathing room so you can actually wear your garment, otherwise you're gonna have start having trouble. But it becomes like a proper corset and you won't be able to eat. You can see I'm avoiding pinning in the garment into the dummy. I'm just gonna pin in the garment so I can take it off again. So I've made it slightly tighter and as I'm redrawing it later on I can even out all the things I'm done. And when, once I'm taking off the trial, I'm going to put it on the table and then actually mark it as pencil how much tighter I've done it. So it's a bit of breathing room, but it's quite nice and tight. Also because the basic bodice in calico is done in wool, really. So the sleeves are, you can see there's lots of these. So what I need to do is actually just write on there to take out these. So yeah, I'm just going to do a cross to take out the ease. Especially if you're making a silk the original one, the sleeve is very sculpted. So silk you can ease a bit, but not as much. So I might leave a centimeter of ease, but this is something like three centimeters, which is far too much. So that's quite um, straightforward. And then I'm also going to quickly draw in roughly the button stand. So that's going to be icing roughly a third from the side seam at the back. And then I want quite a nice line. Okay. The back and then at the front it's more like one third. So it's going to be... Actually I'm going to wait for it until I've put in the second seam and then I might join it up to the seam which will look quite nice. So um, I'm going to use Japanese marking tape, which is quite expensive. So if you're just starting out, just use your pen as I've done it. But I'm going to use a tape so you can clearly see what I'm doing. So I'm going to, I think the seam, the main dart seam is quite similar to my darts already. You sort of, I, in general, you want to avoid your exact bust point. So you even move slightly out, which I, I think is actually too far to the side. So I'm going to move slightly in. And it's just, you don't want to straighten your bust start because it's a bit, it, lo it looks like a Madonna costume rather than a garment. So I'm going to follow the line. And then I think looking at my Garment, they join at the shoulder and they go around. Okay. So that becomes my main style line. And then it's got, I'm going to do this rather than the side seam, I'm going to get rid of the side seam, get rid of that. And then it's going to have side seam slightly forward. So I'm thinking it's, it's like this. And it just follows your side seam. So I'm going to do it quite roughly. And then on paper, you ease out all your lines. This is just going to help you guide. And I'm going to do the same at the back. So that's all my main bodice seams done. Next thing I'm going to do 
is the button stand and the shaping towards the hip. And I think it's quite a high hip, so it's going to be at roughly this level. So first thing is I'm going to put in the button stand. And looking at it, if you think about the buttons on your center, roughly this big. So I think my button stand is going to look like this. So I'm just going to put this on top. Let's just make sure I stay parallel. It's all balanced, and of course, later on as a flat pattern cut, I'm going to make double sure everything is really balanced. So I think we that's the length I'm going to go for. But then this is my first trial, and then if you were making the garment, you make another trial with alterations and then check it again and probably make, make a third trial. Then if you're, if you're doing a proper production garment, you probably do a whole body trial so you can put it on. And then finally you do your sample in the real fabric. And then you might still do alterations before it becomes your salesman sample. Okay, so that's my button stand. I'm gonna quickly mark my center front is a dotted line. So it's here. So it's my center front. And I've got a different separate part of calico. I'm just gonna make it bit bigger than I need it. And because I know that it's really shaped, I'm going to make the, it's quite a little bit longer. So I start, I'm going to start by pinning it all together. And I want to keep the vase. I'm going to pin it on top and then later on mark the waist how I want it. And if you're working in one of the big ateliers, you probably would be working in a fabric which is more like silk because of course calico behaves differently. But a home or if you're working for a small studio, quite often you just use the calico first and then the more expensive fabric later on. I'm not going to turn it over yet. I'm just going to push it down, make sure it stays. That's why the lines of the dummy are really good. I want it to stay on the center front and not start moving. So you can see it's gone slightly wonky. I just want to have it really straight because that's going to help me with my lines later on. So. I'm going to put some, I'm going to put the, sh to create the shaping, I'm going to need to have darts and I'm going to put the darts, the shaping lines into the seams, of course. So I'm going to just roughly work out how far I want it to stand out. So I think it's going to be something like this. So I'm going to pin the fabric here. For now, I'm not going to cut it yet, just in case I need more. 
but by just securing it on the back on the straight of grey. I don't have a fabric flapping around. Okay. So now I want to start the shaping. So there are darts which are gonna become seams. So it goes quite a lot to the front, so it's probably quite a big shaping dart. So I might actually do is cut into the calico. A straight up green roughly. And then pin it together. Then get my other piece of calico and pin it on top at an angle. And as I haven't got any padding, it's not gonna stand out as much. So it's more about getting the overall shape right. I want I'm just gonna and this is a really messy job. But I could have done it all in a flat, but it was quite nice by doing it on the mannequin, I get sort of idea what actually works, otherwise you're just gonna guess what you want to do and then it might not look good. So this way I get a proper visual 3D idea of what works. Okay, then I go do the same. This time I can just just gonna fold it so we can see the pleat roughly. And I'm gonna pin it to the top. So by doing it flat you can see it more. And I think I need actually more a bit more shaping at the front even. And I'm gonna do one more indication of volume at this seam. And then the last one at the back. And interest well the but actually the your garment, the skirt was heavily lined, so it was wool crepe lined in I think something like a canvas. So it would have been really heavy, but again shaped the, the hips quite a lot. So the back was probably quite big as well. And the oh, images it looks like the front is bigger. And I'm actually now gonna take that needle out on the hip. Because of course, as it moves away, it doesn't want to stay. And I'm gonna just put it down one more second to make sure I've got the strain of straight of grain, which is your center back. So that's slightly, so that's your center back. And once I've got it off, I'm actually gonna see if I, it might actually move out a bit. But for the moment, I'm gonna leave this center back straight because it might it might end up once I've made another sample it might end up that I need to add some more here to make it even more curved but at the moment this looks like quite a nice bit of volume and then going to the front I think again I think I might need to put a tiny bit more in, so if I'm just going to move it over that looks like it's starting to look quite nice. If you imagine all the padding, put a bit more later on. So I'm just going to make sure I know the straight up my center front is here. Okay, so I think looking at the Garment. I might make it 
I think it might end up being something like this once it's finished. Slightly shorter than my fabric. Okay, so I just mark that in. So that's my um, this sort of hip shaping done. So the last thing I'm gonna do is draw in my collar. So the break point is really high up. As I said, it's sort of above the armhole even. I'm gonna draw it in around here. So that's my break point. Then it's got the five buttons. So one button and then one is here roughly. Um, something like that. Okay, so my break point is gonna start, of course, it's like this. So I'm gonna use a tape again and just draw the shape of the collar. So it's something starts like that. That's the outer edge of my collar. And then actually, you can see how small it is because there's quite an, always a gap between the seam. And I think this original one, it might have had padded shoulders as well because it's the, it's 47, so you still got sort of padded sh shoulders. So the shoulders probably, if you want to do probably historical ones, you would extend them a bit and pat them out, but I'm not going to do it at the moment. So I'm going to say that's roughly my collar line. And then of course it's going to go up like this, the actual collar. And then I want to quickly, with pen, just draw in there, I think, a bit straighter. Yes, and I'm seeing I'll move this over a bit. And this is why the tape is quite good because you can change it with a pen. You end up with 10 lines, and then it's quite hard to know which one is the right one. I'm going to do more like that. Okay. And so this is now and then of course I've just drawn roughly the outline but then of course it looks more like this and then you got the cutout which is right near the shoulder so it looks something like that okay and then I'm just going to use you could actually drape the whole collar for now I'm just going to flat cut it because it's quite a basic color so it's faster to flat cut it and the last thing i need to do is draw in my where i want my second sleeve line to be okay and i think as i'm going to make the sleeve i might take a bit out to shape it as well Again, you have to actually use sleeves. I think you always have to try it on as well to see what type need to be. But this is a really basic, quick first drape on the trial, just drawing in the design lines. I'm gonna quickly extend my darts as well so I know where they go. And then I'm actually gonna put darts already so I know how they match up. So I'm drawing. They have pleated the fabric I'm drawing either line that side of the fabric so I know they match together. Yeah, and then this is my actual design line. So I've got two lines and they're quite messy. One is the, I'm taking out the fabric and then this is going to be the final seam.
This is a bit easier because that's actually matching it, so I've just drawn one line again telling me. And it's, you want to be fairly precise, but I'm going to actually, once you put on paper, you, um, you make sure everything matches. And also it's about speed. If you, you could do a beautiful, completely draped calico sample, but it take you hours. So this is quite, this is just me helping me, guiding me what I need to do rather than a perfect representation of your garment. I'll put two notches where as I know it's back. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna take it off the mannequin now, then push it on my table and see how I can transform this design point onto my pattern. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I show you how to transfer your design from draping onto a pattern. Make sure you click onto a link for part three.